Hello everyone and welcome back to the series Basic Interfacing Components of 8085 Microprocessor. Today we are going to learn about the encoder. So without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the topic that we are going to cover in this session. From the interfacing components of 8085 microprocessor, if you remember, in the previous sessions, we already have studied the latch and the tri-state buffer. Today, we are going to learn about the interfacing component encoder. Now, an encoder in the context of interfacing components with a microprocessor such as 8085 is a device which is used to convert information from one format into another suitable for processing by the microprocessor. Let me explain this functionality with the help of an illustration. Say we would like to interface the keyboard with the 8085 microprocessor. Now in this context, the encoder will be placed in between and it is actually employed to translate the keystrokes into a digital format or a digital code so that the microprocessor can understand and process the keystroke. Let me explain the entire process of encoding. So at first, the keyboard input will come from the keyboard. Basically, when a key on the keyboard is pressed, it generates a unique electrical signal corresponding to the key. Now after this, the functioning of the encoder will take place. Here the encoder, which is a dedicated integrated circuit, receives the electrical signal and converts that into a digital code. This digital code represents the key which was pressed on the keyboard. The encoding process involves assigning a unique binary code to each key of the keyboard. Next part in the processing encoding is the interfacing with the microprocessor. Here, the encoded digital output from the encoder is then fed to the input ports of the 8085 microprocessor, usually via the addressable input output ports or parallel input ports. These ports of the microprocessor allow the processor to receive the digital data from the keyboard encoder. Now, once the digital data representing the pressed key is received by the microprocessor, it then can process this information according to the program written in its memory. This is known as processing by the microprocessor. For example, the microprocessor can interpret the key press as a character input and perform tasks such as displaying the character on screen, storing it in the memory, or even executing a specific command based on the key pressed. And this action can be termed as the response from the microprocessor. So when we interface the microprocessor with the keyboard, the entire process of encoding will involve five different phases. Now to summarize, an encoder facilitates the communication between the external devices like the keyboard and the microprocessor by converting input signal from the device into a digital format which then can be processed by the microprocessor. So this is what I meant when I said the encoder is a device which is used to convert information from one format into another. That is, the electrical charge is now converted into a digital code, clearly from one format into another. And the digital code is suitable for the processing by the microprocessor. That is, the microprocessor is able to understand the digital code, not the electrical signals of the keystrokes. So clearly, the presence of the encoder allows for the seamless interaction between the user and the microprocessor-based systems. So from this illustration, I believe it is now clear to you that why encoder is a basic interfacing component of the 8085 microprocessor. Now coming to the formal definition of the encoder, it is a logic device that converts one of the input signals into a coded output signal. Encoders in a digital system are used to reduce the number of lines. Now let me show you how it is done. Consider this encoder. As you can notice, it is a 4 by 2 encoder, that is, it has got 4 inputs and 2 outputs. So clearly, from the 4 input lines, 
the encoder is going to produce different sequence of outputs which will correspond to each one of the inputs. Now let me show you that using the truth table. Now interestingly, in this particular encoder, if you notice, all the input signals are active low. That is, if we feed 1 to any of these, the input line to which 1 is being fed will be treated as inactive. On the other hand, if we feed 0, the input line which receives 0 will be treated as active. But that's not the case for output yet. Therefore, if in all the input lines we are having 1s, in that case, no output will be generated. Because this specifies that none of the input lines are active. Now notice this pattern 1, 1, 1, 0. So clearly, only the input line I0 is high, the rest are low. Remember, we are using active low inputs. So to specify that I1 input line is high, we are going to use this pattern. That is, I3, I2 and I0 will be set to 1's. Only I1 will be reset to 0. Then again with the pattern 1011, it will be specified that I2 is active. Finally, with the pattern 0111, we will specify that input line I3 is active. So we have got four different patterns. And along with that, we have got two different output lines. So the sequence 0, 0 will indicate I0 is high. 0, 1 will indicate I1 is high. 1, 0 is going to indicate that the input line I2 is high. And 1, 1 will indicate that the input line I3 is active. Now these are going to be the output sequences if we have active high outputs. But generally, in case of digital integrated encoders, both the inputs and the outputs are active low. So if we convert the output lines as active low output lines, in the truth table, the output sequences will be toggled. That is, 0, 0 will now become 1, 1. 0, 1 will become 1, 0. 1, 0 will become 0, 1. And 1, 1 will become 0, 0. In other words, the output sequence 1, 1 will specify that I0 is active. 1, 0 is going to specify that the input line I1 is active. 0, 1 will specify the input line I2 is active. And 0, 0 output sequence is going to specify that the input line I3 is active. So basically, the encoder, which happens to be a logic device that converts one of the input signals, that is, any one of these into a coded output signal. Try to understand this. The code which states that the input signal I3 is high is this one. In this pattern, we have got 0 stating I3 is high and the rest of the lines are low. That is, there are no inputs coming from these lines. And what is the code for that? It is 0, 0. Also, with the help of the encoder, the number of input lines, which was previously 4, can now be represented using only two output lines. Therefore, encoder can reduce the number of lines in a digital circuit. Finally, the name encoder is also justified because the input lines are now coded. Now, specifically in case of 8085 microprocessor, the encoder 74LS148 is used. This is an 8 to 3 priority encoder. This encoder is generally used while handling interrupts. We will learn about it in details when we will be studying about the interrupt handling mechanism of 8085 microprocessor. And as you can notice, in this case, both the input lines and the output lines are active low. So this is all about the encoder interfacing component. So in this session, we covered the topic, the basic interfacing component encoder. All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we are going to learn about the last basic interfacing component of 8085. 
सो आई होप टू सी यू इन द नेक्स्ट वन थैंक यू ऑल फॉर वॉचिंग